Welcome everyone. Welcome again. Boy, are the fireworks popping off pretty good right now. A um, lot going on, and I thought I'd um, bring in uh, my buddy, friend, brother John F. We're going to discuss some of the um, some of the things that are occurring right now, and why we feel that there's a very good possibility, almost completely a good possibility that. Um, that the the crash has started that, that there's a lot of um good evidence i would say that um we're finally there uh based on things trump's trump is saying uh towards the fed things uh q is saying about red october and finally the uh response in the markets and uh what is actually happening because i was looking at it we were I was out this morning. We saw the big drop yesterday. I was out this morning. Went out and said, "Well, give us some time to think," you know, because John and I chatted last night. We're like, "Well, let's sleep on it. Let's see what what kind of psych out move might occur on this, and and let's see how it's going." And just before John and I got together, we're watching the markets, and that dead cap bounce rolls over, breaks its resistance, and starts heading south again. So, um. I don't know. Hi, John. How are you? Hey, what's up, Aaron? <laughs> it's it's I I. It's not what's up, buddy. It's what's down. Yeah, actually, actually no, because uh, I wanted to share with you right now. Um, I'm just looking at a cross of the gold spot overlaid over the Dow. And yeah, and it's turned. That's the, that's what I'm saying. What could be up is. You, last night there was a few people who put out some videos about well the the flight to safety is not going into the bonds and well gold didn't move yesterday but today gold is moving gold was up thirty bucks in a month let me see um, maybe you or I can do a screen share yeah I can show you mine right now um, yeah pull pull up pull up yours maybe maybe we'll be able to see that um, because. Hey, there's me. Okay, so you can see here. Uh, there you go. It's a thirty-minute. The the candlesticks. Uh, that's the Dow, and then yep. this line chart is um, gold. So you can gold. see. Uh, let's put on the daily. Dow took so that the, big dump yesterday. Which there was a reverse correlation. Yeah, and, like, and, and it didn't start. It didn't really start until this morning. Um, no, with with gold, it was after, you know, after we started to get this second drop, that that that's when gold started to take off. And and, you know, does does it continue to follow through? I mean, we're gonna have to see this, but you know, from, you know, you and I, you, like I said, you taught me a lot about the technicals. Um, years ago, when I was following your 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 silver charting, and from the perspective on the uh, the Dow, the S and P, and the Nasdaq, all three of them, the last two days have literally been um, a cutthroat against the neck of this market. You know, of, as far as puts in a perfect double top. You look at that. That is a gorgeous double top. Yeah, it is. This the new shoulder is a little bit higher than the old shoulder, but yeah, that's starting to form up into that M for murder sort of yep. pattern. But uh, you know, if you look back here in the long term, you can see that our last financial crisis was, um, you know, gold had was going into new highs. It was two thousand and eight, and we know. That we had the silver, the massive silver manipulation was connected directly to that crisis because it was in December of that of the of 2007 when we started to see Bear Stearns A and B hedge funds start to you know show signs of insolvency. It was Bear Stearns first, and we know that Bear Stearns was the uh, key silver manipulator at that point. And then if you remember in the spring, silver. Uh, made that new high and it looked like it was gonna take off I think it was 21 bucks but don't quote me on it and it was 
Yeah, up to around twenty one. And then uh and then and then just they just utterly destroyed silver and then and then we had the uh the financial crisis which just followed right on the heels of that. So if you look at the chart you can see that um both of them were falling together and gold this is the gold chart not the silver chart, but yeah. gold yeah. was falling with the market. 2008, it started to get real hairy in the fall, and then you can see about in October of 2008, you can see that's where gold made that bottom. And then turned around and, and started yeah, getting and, up. Yeah, and, and then started rallying. Now, stocks continued down. You can't really see it that well, but there's this period yeah. of time here where gold was rising and stocks were falling. And then it was... You know, the election of Obama, and then, then in the spring of 2009, they just turned on the money spigots. And that's when stocks bottomed and gold just continued to rise. So they were rising together as a reaction of that all that printed money that the government was throwing at the crisis. And then and, in the fall of 2011, when gold spiked, the markets they were going in reverse and they they knew they had to get a handle on it and that's when we started to see the unprecedented manipulation yeah right we got there. we started the manipulation started in the spring with the the fifty dollar silver capping because silver was getting ready to go through that fifty dollar price and we talked before about the tremendous significance of those nominal prices because that 50 bucks is what it hit in the 70s and 50 bucks is going to be new all-time highs and 50 bucks is going to be you know the beginning of the bull market that's when all the sheep were going to go oh man i gotta buy some silver so that's where they had to cap it and that's when we got the unprecedented five uh overnight margin increases and we also got the mysterious capture of Osama bin Laden, you know, which we never, you know, this, all these news items hit on the exact same day. And then Obama releases his birth certificate. And it's like, bam, bam, bam. And that just happened to coincide with the, with the top in the silver price. And then it was just downhill from there. And then roughly in the fall, that's when gold started to follow and just started tanking from there. And then you can see this period of time here in roughly 2015 where they were kind of, they were just kind of going sideways both together. It was a consolidation yep. period for both. And then all of a sudden stocks just took off and gold went nowhere. And that's what really the precious metals people just were baffled by that one. And that was just the Federal Reserve and the cabal just pouring money into stocks. So you can see stocks have gone from that low on, this is the Dow of that mysterious six, well on the S&P it was 666, but on the Dow it was roughly 6,600, close to it, yep. all the way up to 27,000. Uh, I think that's right, yeah. And, and what, what justifies that valuation? Nothing. Nothing no. but uh, but them just trying to get all the sheeple into the same pen. So when they decide to share them, they can share them all at the same time. And that may be very I soon. Think we're, very, we're very close. There's a, uh, for the naysayers, there, there is a couple of technical things that we want to see here in the next day or so. And it could have happened this afternoon because it's only... 315 ish 314 um, and trading trading could still go down but since you've got the chart up there um, John why don't you pull a, a, a support line uh, cross zoom back out right there those tails were in February and in the one that happened in February the one that happened in in um, nope you zoomed out you yeah let me grab a let me grab a clean chart of the Dow here I'll just do the Dow. We got one more kind of support line. There you go. And if you go along those tails, those little tail wick tails there, uh, from February through um, April and May, not down there, not down there. This would be the first one, but say like right here. Yeah, well, no, that's not a good one. So you're talking about this 
right here. You're talking about this channel. No, 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 no. February. The first big dip back in February. Clear, right clear the, Yeah, that one. And draw that one. That one. Yeah, That's so that one, you, you, if you want to take the spikes out, you, you get right that one, about that one actually, there. That one actually ties back to the little peak right before the third line. The, the third line that you drew, I've drawn, drawn, I've drawn this one in repeatedly. Um, the, the, um, the little blip right before the, the third line. Now, you drew it fourth, but it, it goes all the way back, and I've seen that one go all the way back down into some points um, in 2015 and 2016 when we had those two drops down there to the, the lower end. That one line is a very powerful line. And yeah. we, we are, you know, you don't have it quite in there, but... I've got the weekly the up back. now, so you can see on the weekly. Yeah, so if you, that one candle wick. What, uh, about what time frame are you talking right, about? Back up in February, February, that long wick where we took the first dump. Right first, in here. That one right there. You can click on that one and you can tie it all the way back. So yeah, back click, down in here. Yeah, back and down in there. And that goes all the way under the, 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 the next. Um, oh, it cuts out this section here. I got you. Okay. Anyway, the, the point is once we break through that, it will be um, lights out. Lights out. <laughs> hey, hey, that's it. You got it. You got it. Boom. That's the one I'm talking about. You just, oh, where'd you go? I went to the daily to show it closer, but it's the red line here as opposed to the blue line. But yeah, they're, they're pretty close to each other. So really, if we get a continuation of what's going on here, and if 2008 is any precedence, then normally you get, you know, days in a row um it would be today or tomorrow we take out both these lines and yeah it's down here we're looking at if we get twenty four thousand or twenty four thousand five then we're talking a black monday a black tuesday a black wednesday yeah, what one is it? it's thursday today today's thursday so we got to clean up uh, you know if we don't finish this week off with any kind of um, bullish engulfing blue candle on a chart it's lights out it is yeah and if you remember I don't know if you remember the markets all the way back in 1987 yeah but 87 was roughly the exact same time frame and if you want to read a like kind of a blow by blow you can get market wizards in the interview with Jimmy Rogers at that time but we had a Thursday a big big down day you know for the market at that time and then Friday followed on with kind of a really ugly day closing in the reds you know closing at the lows and then we know what happened Monday it was Black Monday we got that 500 point drop and back at that time you know that was unbelievable because the high was 2700 on the Dow and we, had, we were already down around 2000 and we took another 500 points off so yeah, this is this is almost eerie in how similar it is. It is, and, and, and it's kind of a good but queasy good feeling, because <laughs> <laughs> you know you know we're seeing it. We're we're we're, we're we stopped this little inching up, inching up, inching up, inching up, inching up, and we've got you know because I did the video about the body slam. I said I said you know back in. Um, middle of May ish somewhere in that time frame when we started stepping back up and we started breaking some 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 upward resistance lines I was like oh no 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 they're they're picking this back up for a body slam we're not gonna you know the we're not gonna just roll over and, and go now they're picking it up for a big one so my suspicions are in the next week two weeks three weeks that we are going to get a a true true body slam. Let me. Um, uh, it's hard. I want to draw the lines, and and you you got well, the chart. Me, I'll I'll just unshare, and you can draw. Hold on. Yeah, let's 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 switch it up here, because. Did that uh, take it off a of share screen? Yeah. Okay. You should be. I'll bring you up. You should be getting my screen now. Yeah, I can see you. All right, so let me go to, because I want to hit some of these headlines. 
I mean, like right here, this is a big one. This is what tells me it's on the way. You see that Trump blames market route on the Fed. Remember, I was we were talking yesterday, and I'm saying, yeah, everybody's bitching and fussing about Trump owning the market, yeah. but laying the foundation in this 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 this, this article about because he came out and spoke on it yesterday. He spoke on it this morning, and I think he's going to get ready to go. You know what? The Fed fucked up. We need to get them out of there. Excuse my language, but that's where it looks like. So let me. I'll see. We'll look at that. Now, while we've been talking, we've got a nice little blue candle bounce. But let me pull it up here. Because there are some. There is some. Let me get you out of the way. I want to take you back out. Because we had the monthly. No, we didn't have the monthly. What did we have? The the daily or the weekly? Because my suspicions, and this is just my gut. So here's the first one that I'm was talking about, and that's this support line right here, because it goes all the way back. Can it? Yeah, you're drawing it from the top of that other one. Yeah, I'm I'm going all the way back, and it actually ties way back you had it clicked on a uh, few others but my suspicions are that we are going to hit and I'm not going to be able I got to go to the weekly to get to it hold on not the monthly the weekly weekly oh yeah and this is just speculation on my part yeah but I'm I'm seeing our first bounce because here's the, here's the thing, what needs to happen and what has been speculated based on fundamentals by a lot of people who have analyzed this thing is that this thing just needs to shut down and go away. Um, Bill Holter has talked about it quite a bit, that it's, it's in over a weekend, it's done. It shuts down and goes away completely. But there are a lot of people that are putting a lot of... Um, faith in Trump. In is, he, is Holter talking about just like the whole market shutting down and going away? Yeah, the, the whole financial system shuts down in 48 hours. It's done. It's over with. Banks are closed. Everything's gone. He said this in several of his interviews. And there is fundamental, there is fundamental information that would lead me to believe that that is a very real possibility. I agree with him on a lot of the things he says. But here's my thought on it. Trump coming in and wanting to not do what Hillary Clinton and the the deep state wanted to do, which was do a hard stop on this. Trump may have come in and some of his negotiation, because you've seen him over the last couple of years, is to, okay, okay, I'm in here, but we're going to do this a little bit less impactful. We're going to take it down a little slower. And that's what I'm kind of feeling from it. And maybe I'm off in this, but my thought is this. Trump is going to try and take it down, but at a little bit more gradual pace instead of a total system shutdown. So you see this line I've got in here? Yeah. My suspicions are sometime between now and October-ish, or excuse me, November-ish, the November 11th, over the next 30 days, I'm yeah. thinking. I'm thinking that we do a bounce, a big dead cat bounce on this level right here. You're thinking all the way down at twelve thousand for the first move. The, for, for so the you're first talking about cut in half. That's a fifty percent correction in the Dow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the reason I do is because we've got we've got some good technical support lines. You've got one that's there. You've got this one that goes right here that create a potential you know breaking point here now does it uh stay there long i don't know well that i mean that just on an offhand would you know if uh, the fangs uh, how many of the fangs the facebook amazon netflix google how many of those are listed in the dow or 
because they're all in the Nasdaq. I think most of them are in the Nasdaq, and that's why the the Nasdaq has had put on all the new highs, new highs, new highs, new highs, new highs all summer long. Yeah, because I mean, I think it's reading between the lines, but I don't think Trump would really have any problem with uh, seeing. You know, like I did on Google Must Die video that I did. You know, I don't think Trump would have any problem seeing those guys die. Well, he's tweeted about them, about their 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 um, shadow banning. He's tweeted about the 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 censorship. You know, he, you know, I, and I've been warning in my videos, and all of you folks out there that are listening, you know, I've been telling you we need to get off of these platforms because they are tied to the corruption to the pedophilia we know this because there are I mean Sean over at SGT reports done a hell of a, a hell of a job documenting the the connections and links about how these organizations are run and and as I stated in my last live stream I feel we would be lucky if you know the 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 Trump the, the the regulators who would actually regulate and the Trump administration who would actually come in and clean and the Justice Department would who would actually come in and take care of cleaning things up that that maybe they would do it like a Ma Bell and come in and break it up into a bunch of companies and say you're too big you know we're going to knock you down a little bit that would be one way that we could potentially save that and. YouTube may not die, but yeah, I, well, I don't know. I but mean, I don't think Trump. I mean, he he gave some indications that he is not too happy about using the power of the government to to get involved with speech. And the reason why he said was that you know once once you go down that road, it's very hard to go back. Yeah. And so maybe you know the market's going to take care of it. I don't know. I mean, these guys are all, you know, you look at Twitter, you look at Facebook, you look at Google, and you know Trump's emphasis is is uh, getting us back to making things again, you know. Yeah. And oh, these speak, guys don't make well, well, anything. Speaking of which, speaking of which, did you see the video with him and Kanye West? Uh, I've been following that. It, it was kind of interesting. I, I know I, I've been following it ever since Kanye flipped. Do you remember that? Yeah. Do you remember when yeah. that happened? Because he gave that big speech about they're lying to you. Facebook is lying to you. Hollywood yep. is lying to you. And then they they took Kanye. I, I think one of the videos shows him actually being tackled, you know, on stage. Uh -huh. And then they took him back to their controllers or whatever it was. But then the next day, he's at a press conference with Trump. Yeah, he here. I got the video up. I was just before you and I, you know, talked for a bit or started talking here. I was just just listen to what he's saying because you could see the smile on Trump's face here. Yeah. It didn't look like the people they were amending. Also, at that point, it was illegal for blacks to read or African Americans. To read, um, and so that meant if you actually read the amendment, you get locked up. What's <laughs> like again? So what I think is we don't need sentences. We need pardons. We need to talk to people. Uh, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I was connected with a neuropsychologist that works with the athletes in the NBA and the NFL, and he he looked at my brain. It's equal on three parts. I'm gonna go ahead drop some bombs for you, 98 percentile IQ test. I had a 75 percentile of all human beings, but it was counting eight numbers backwards off your repeat, so I'm going to work on that one. The other one's 98 percent, Tesla, Freud, you know. So um, he said that I actually wasn't bipolar. I had sleep deprivation, which could cause dementia. Oh, well, no, this isn't the good part. What, the good part when was this? There, this was today. This is today? Yeah, this earlier. sitting across from Trump. Oh, my goodness. And I went to Casper. We had a meeting in Chicago. There was a I party. Said, was... You have to bring manufacturing on shore, in, not even shore, into the core. Is yeah. that about 
borders, the core of Adidas, and Chicago is the core of middle America. We have to make middle America strong. So I had the ball because I had enough to put on this hat. I, I mean, this Adidas thing made me a billionaire, and I could have lost $200 million walking away from that deal. But even with that, I knew it was more important for me to take the chance of walking away from that deal than to have no fathers in Chicago with no homes. And when wow. we do have preparation for no, because it's, uh, uh, it's habilitation, not rehabilitation, because we didn't have the abilities in the first place. We never had anyone that taught us. We didn't teach us. Exactly. We didn't have no one that taught us. Right? So um, uh, it's more important than any specific deal, any, anything, that we bring jobs into America and that we provide a transition with mental health and the American um, uh, education curriculum that a Dem has worked on. Larry Hoover also has a curriculum that he's working on. Well, the point I'm getting at is, and everybody can go watch the video on their own, it's on RT, but because you won't see it on ABC, NBC, CBS, you know, they're going to they're gonna clip it out. and Right. But, the, I mean, the, just the five minutes that I listened to was, he hit every talking point about what needs to really happen to well, him. Was this a White House press conference, or what was you, it? Yes, this is, this is at his, you know, Trump's desk. You can okay, see so it. Trump is, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that Trump has been getting quite a bit of pull in the African-American community. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's he's kind of, people are flipping to his side one by one. There's the walk away thing. And, you know, Q has been talking about, one of Q's memes recently was showing you how many Democrats voted against the 13th, 14th, and 15th <laughs> Amendments, you know. So, um, I, I, Trump, I think Trump has decided that he's going after the black vote he thinks he can win the black vote, and uh, I think he can. Oh, I th well, you, obviously you could you you can see it in in the response. I, you know, like I said, I I don't want any rulers personally, but you know, if if he's going to do what he says he can do, like I stated in my last video, a lot of people didn't seem to understand this. They hear a, a phrase or two and they flip out. Let me clarify. We are in a situation where we have a system that is in place and there's one of two options one option is every the entire thing comes crashing down and we have utter total chaos the other option is that we try and clean it out from within I'm okay with the second option I'm okay with people uh, of good good character good nature such as what Trump has presented himself as so far to get in there and do that. I'm okay with that. My concern is, and, and this is what I put forth in my last video, is that all of us need to be more educated, more aware, and more involved so that we can assure that we're just not handing power. I know he said it in his inauguration speech that he's going to hand power back to the people. I know he said that, right. but I want to see him hold up that word which means I want to see the three-letter agencies disbanded. I want to see I want to see everything reduced fr from the federal perspective. I want to see it taken back. Um, I want to see a lot of the laws that were put on the books by these corrupt people, everybody back to probably Nixon and maybe beyond. All the amendments that aren't exactly constitutional, all the laws. I need it. We need to roll things back significantly. And that is the only thing that will really truly make me feel like we did make progress because, you know, we've heard some of the data and information about um, Kavanaugh support, um, not being a supporter of the First Amendment, not being a supporter of the Fourth Amendment, and that he is all for the 5G. And we're not going to get, we're not going to dive into the details of it. But what it makes me wonder is because Trump has certain people that have certain character issues about their beliefs towards certain aspects of the original uh, Constitution and ten, ten, First Ten Amendments that I want to make sure that we do truly roll it back to what it was, which is supposed to be a limited representative republic, not a democracy, 
a limited representative republic and that those who do represent are only there for a short period of time take care of the job and go home you know yeah to, i mean that's a that just remains to be seen you know that's also my big fear is that you know the um to drain the swamp it's going to take some pretty serious draconian powers and you know once those powers are issued and used, will that can president be able to ro roll back? Yeah, can it be relinquished? <clears throat> and, and anybody who's got, I hope all of those who are listening to this, understand that that's what we have to be, because we're the ones, you know, it is my belief that we, the people, have power. You, I, uh, John, you, you, you know, your family, my family, all of us are the ones who are going to make the decision. See, what allow these corrupt pedophile banking elite to get into the foothold that they did was a, a bit of complacency on the general population this is why I say it was your grandfather's my grandfather's grandmother's our, you know it was our generations before that were conservative minded that just didn't want to get involved it's not like what you see with the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party can whip out every crazy person out there with every off-the-wall idea and get them out there to a march. You know, most of your conservative Christian people, they stay home. They're, it's That's not their thing. They don't want to get out there and be... Yeah, well, I don't know how many <laughs> of those Democrats and Antifa people are a bunch of paid actors, but... And some of that now, yeah, is being paid. But, you know, back, just to bring that full circle back to the Dow, which, by the way, had a huge bounce. I'm looking at a bounce from 24,900, ran all the way to 20, well, about a 400-point bounce, and now it's going back. This is the exact same pattern that we saw uh, back in 2008. Just a huge range expansion, volatility increase, and every time everybody thought the selling was over with because it was rallying, then it, it just knocked the legs out from underneath it and go down more. But yep. I wanted to bring it full circle in, in regards to what you said about people abdicating responsibility. You know, one of the first videos that I did on my office series for the Silver for the People, the Brother John F. thing, was um, yep. talking about 401k uh, and silver and, you know, the difference between holding it and you know you don't hold it you don't own it and the people have completely abdicated their responsibility for investing in their retirement because you know they're buying a share in a share in a share i mean they're buying they're buying mutual funds Derivatives of derivatives. Der yeah, they're buying derivatives of derivatives of derivatives. And so, you know, the, the initial the initial model, which I don't think is perfect, certainly is flawed, but the initial corporate model uh, based on public ownership of stock, which is, again, even the shares have been corrupted, but the idea is that people own a percentage of the company and they have voting rights. Uh-huh. And so when the company is doing something either... Uh, a normally just not profitable. That's going to be you know ninety nine percent of the time. But for your modern progressive you know fruits and nuts, uh, then if they don't like the environmental impact or they don't like something about the policies or the gender policies, whatever, they can go ahead and vote in the shareholder meeting and say we don't like the direction the company's taking on this policy. We want to change, and they can vote and change that. So they can vote and change. You know, political policies that the company has, they can vote and change economic policies the company has, or you know, what direction they're taking new products. They have complete control if they're actually exercising their vote that their shares represent. Well, that's all gone. People have completely abdicated that. And they've handed it over to these Wall Street fat cats that vote their shares by proxy. And you know, they, the people have no say in the direction of the companies and they've just been conned, they've just been put to sleep. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why um, they're so vulnerable to this, this potential liquidation in the stocks is because 
they're like you said, they own a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. They wouldn't even know how to sell if they wanted to. And so they're just going to go down with the ship. And they can't because people who work, see, and we're talking about the pension funds for basically everybody who works for any municipality or, or agency, period, whether it's um, local city, town, um, whoever is working for the government, and that's 40%, that's 40% of all the people who are working now are out there working for the government, not producing stuff. You know, so everybody who is in that 40%, we're talking everybody from the trash man to the to the um, you know the garbage collector to to the um, the, the the meter reader to the um, you know FBI pick, CIA you yeah, name all it. of them the, the state agencies the city agencies the federal agencies the NSA all of the agencies all of the different government that's 40 percent of our population is being supported by government. Yeah, and those people don't pay any taxes. And those people will argue vehemently to you, you know, I pay my taxes. Yeah, but your taxes come from someone else's taxes. Yes. It, 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 You're it, not it, paying anything. Self, self-devouring self system. And the point where I'm going with it is all of those people, every one of them, that has been in their position for any length of time has been forced to... Um, put their retirement into the markets. Yep, and they can't get it out. And you cannot go get it out without losing your job. Or or you, you, you can only get out basically by a termination of some sort. Yeah, I did. I had a, I had a pension and a 401k and all that stuff, and they said, well, you can't get it. I'm like, well, how, how do I collect my money? They're like the only way is to quit a job. I quit my job. Actually, ended up hiring back at the same company six months later. But uh, yeah, I quit just so I could get that money and get it out of the system and get it into silver and crypto and stuff like that. Because yeah, it's designed. It's designed to trap you. And you'll see it if you remember back in two thousand and eight. You'll see this kind of dull, complacent lethargic, zombie-like look that you start to see in the eyes of the people. When they know that their money is just going away and there's nothing, they just become, it's like sheep to the slaughter, you know, lined up in the stockades. They know they're going to their death, but there's nothing they can do to stop it. And they won't fight against it. No, they're totally complacent. They've been lulled to sleep. You know, and this this get touches on so many things. I think it was um, I don't know if you remember who the guy is, the Kaffer guy, the C A F R guy. No, I'm not. I can't remember his name, but anyway, it's Kaffer, Consolidated Annual Financial Reports, and this is a guy who studied the state, local, and federal governments and how much of the stock market they actually own. And it's a shocking number. So Jeez. the government owns most of these companies through the government retirement systems. But then there was another one, uh, I can't remember her name, she's one of the alternative community uh, people and she was on Reagan's, uh, she was in Reagan's cabinet at one point. I wish I could Are you talking about Catherine Austin Fitz? Yes, Catherine Austin Fitz. Yeah. And she talked about one time how she gave a speech <clears throat> to all the government employees about uh, taking out all the black budgets and wiping out all the drug and pedo money and all the filthy uh, lucre that's supporting these black budgets and she actually drew out all the math of it and basically told these people yeah your retirement's going to zero and uh -huh. all these people were like oh well then we can't do away with all that illegal drugs and crime and stuff like that because our retirements are based on it <laughs> <laughs> that's the reality yeah so the, then the then the fix depending upon who you listen to and their hypothecated ideas, um, speculated ideas, is that um, is that when we we do this reset, that we are supposed to um, refund and reboot the system to the people who had paid in the most using Social Security as a means to pay out whatever new monetary system or currency or potentially gold or silver to those individuals 
to essentially cash out that system and be the end of that system because Social Security needs to go away as well. And I, I know I'm probably going to get 50,000 thumbs down on that statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's Bix Weir's theory, but um, yeah. who's to say? I mean, you know, the bottom line is that those transfer systems are based on the idea that somebody owes you something. And... Uh -huh. The bottom line is that uh, the bank has already been robbed. Yep. The, con the Congress robbed it. So if you think you're do something, uh, you know, and I have Social Security coming. I have a, you know, pretty fat check coming my way. I've been working my whole life. Supposed to. I'm supposed to. I've seen mine. I got a lot of money for the taxes I've paid over the years. Yeah, but I mean... If you're going to honestly make the proposition that you know you're owed something, then you have to at least face up to the fact that what you're in fact saying is that existing younger people need to support me, because that's the reality. There isn't yeah. a fund. The fund is gone. The money was stolen many many years ago. So if you can honestly tell yourself and convince your children that you know five of them need to work as a slave and have roughly 50 60 or 70 percent of their income taken to support you good luck i don't think you're going to be able to make that argument no no uh, so apparently um cnn went ahead and put uh, kanye's cousin up on air oh well, yeah they're going to do whatever they can to i don't think i don't think trump really cares i mean if you look, Kanye just released a, a new video that he did. I can't remember who he did it with. It was some rapper, but um, it was nowhere clean in any way. It was pretty filthy, kind of like the old Kanye. I don't know. Trump doesn't seem to be too worried about offending people in, in that regard. So, But, yeah, that's huge news. I can't believe that he would have him there. But this is all, I think... The undercurrent of all this stuff we're looking at here is about these upcoming elections. Yeah. Trump is trying to swing as much of the uh, minority community his way, whether that's uh, blacks or Latinos. And, uh, you know, the media is uh, trying to stop any kind of alt-media support, you know, for, for the other candidates. And uh, then we've got uh, this market thing playing out, which I don't know. Will they be able to pin it on Trump, or will Trump be able to pin it on the Fed, or you know, if it if it goes that far before the election? Uh, it's getting more interesting. When I did my little live stream yesterday, I was calling out and saying, "Look, enough is enough. We need to see the arrests now." Q has come out and said, "Are you ready for the arrest?" I think if if they start if they truly start doing that, then then that's whatever support there was in the markets is going to be gone in the blink of an eye. And that well, these yeah, I mean if they I mean, if there are prominent politicians arrested, and they're not just arrested on general corruption charges, but there's some kind of talk of human trafficking. I think is the term they are conditioning the public to accept. If there's any yep. relation to that, you're going to see thousand point air pockets, thousands point air pockets. In and the that, stock that's why I told you on, all right, so you need this last little bump. We're looking at it. Um, uh, stocks rip higher on WAPO report. Trump Z agreed to meet at G20, but you, you look at it, that's now failing here as we've been talking. The little bump that came up, is failing. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's, um, this is it, like I said, this is the exact pattern that we saw in 2008. There was bloody carnage and there was a little bit of hope and then the bloodbath just commenced. And you, you remember, you know, where it was in October, that famous clip of that guy saying, we were minutes away from, you know. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why I'm telling you that, you know, based on what my gut tells me on what um and maybe I'm maybe maybe it goes more than this let me let me span this back out here again I'll put um put these lines back in here this is why I think this is a massive air pocket 
a massive it, air it pump. appears to be yeah at least down to about that 18,000 level you know one of one or both of these lines may slow it down because they're from here up there's nothing but air yeah so a 50% drop to start this and, and I'm not saying that's gonna be the end of it let, let me step you out to the monthly because for all intents and purposes for all intents and purposes let me go zoom in way out here if we were getting unstable enough to crash back here at this teeny little red candle right here 1987 it? yeah back in 87 you know where I think if everything hadn't been manipulated if we had stayed on the gold standard and things had been a, a slow progressive growth I think the market should have done a slow growth maybe somewhere along that line <clears throat> roughly you're talking about a 90 percent correction and that's what um, oh there's probably you know eight, eight or ten people you know Robert Kiyosaki I know has talked about it that way I know Mike Maloney's talked about it that way um, I can go down a list of others that have talked about it but you nature doesn't like to grow that fast and when it does it gets top heavy and it falls and well just looking at that spike there if you remember the run-up to you can look at the run-up the dot-com run-up uh, is your first thing from about 92 through 2000 and then you can look at the next run up was after that well the one we're on right now from 2009 that's the biggest spike we've ever seen that bigger than the 80s that resulted in the 87 crash we're on it's bigger than the last recession it's bigger than the dot-com bubble I mean this is they've blown a bigger bubble again than we've ever seen before in history so my suspicions are this, and it, say hi to the conductor of your train. Yeah, no, that's the second one while we're doing this video. <laughs> People wonder why I don't get any sleep, and they, I mean, it's, uh, I'm working on getting out of here. That's what I'm working on. So my suspicions are we, we, we'll do a bounce around these potential lines here. These are major, major lines. So if we dropped, you know, ten, twelve thousand hit here, and then dropped again, my suspicion is these bounces could happen over the next couple of years. Our first initial bounce, maybe things look to get better for a month or two, a couple months, and then we roll over, hit this one, bounce again, and over the next year, come down to this one. You know, it could be a two, three year time frame for us to get down there, but once... It could one, be real quick, too. And it could be, you got it, it could be we come down to this area here at this support you know and and that's it yeah and uh, people don't people don't understand that there that there can be uh, long periods of time where it's absolutely over the uh, you know the Japanese stock market topped and crashed starting in 1990 it has still not recovered <laughs> nope no so, you know, basically the public in Japan, they, they, they need to wait for everybody to die that even was alive when that happened because just about everybody who lost everything is like, I will never buy another stock again as long as I live. And so these things can go on bear markets. You know, there were periods in the 1930s uh, during the Great Depression where the New York Stock Exchange was closed. There was a period, I think, for uh, six months where the exchange itself was just plain closed. Didn't There weren't any trades yeah. at all. No, they, they, they shut it down because they needed everybody to, to, to quit, to forget, to think, not to think about it. <laughs> not to think about how uh, they lost everything and that half the Midwest blew away. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to pull up another one here real quick. For the reverse of this, because, you know, you and I have talked, privately about you know where where silver should be historically and I'm in the 2000 an ounce range historically yeah 
do as. Did you say silver? Silver. Silver. Silver to be in the 2,000 an ounce range. Yeah, I didn't even pull up the silver chart today. I didn't even think of it. I always go and look at gold first. Yeah, it's silver took a nice little jump. 30 cents last I saw just a moment. But if you go here to the debt clock, interestingly enough, the paper to silver ratio. Yeah. Look what they've done. See that $180 to 180 to 1? Paper Ex dollars to what? Paper to silver ratio. Is that now, an ounce of silver? What is it? Yes, to an ounce. Now, here's the thing. People made, uh, uh, was it about three, four, five months ago, early spring? That, you know, I know Bix talked about it. I know a couple of others talked about it, that if you went to the debt clock, that it was showing in the six to 700 range. And, oh, uh, interestingly enough, last year, about a year ago, I did a video somewhere around the line, I did a video here on the debt clock, it showed, it showed silver at a $970 an ounce ratio. So it showed a silver price of 970 bucks, or it was 970 to one? 970 to one. How can it change that much? That's why I think we're, we're getting close to that point where things go, because Remember, this is this is a manipulated site. This U.S. debt clock, it's it's algorithms that they're they're doing to play with it. I mean, because look at here, because yeah. yeah. they had they had gold at nine thousand, and now it's down to forty nine hundred. Yeah, it's. I don't think anybody can even calculate it. You know, it's. I think Ted Butler and Vic Swear are both convinced that J.P. Morgan has. Uh, 800 million ounces of silver or something like that, physical silver. So there... Now, could, 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 could uh, the dollar value of silver go back to one dollar equals an ounce of silver? I think it could. But you'd have to have one hell of a bond. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting because I think I heard somebody say, I think it was Peter Schiff, in uh, one of his interviews, he said, well, you know, the constitutional definition of money is gold. It's like, no, actually, no. The constitutional definition of the dollar is silver, not yes, gold. Silver. Not gold. Silver. But, yeah, a return to that, oh, my goodness. I don't even want to think about the price. We're at least above 10K per ounce and maybe a lot higher. Yeah, as long as there are all those printed dollars out there, I mean, we could we could even still. Let's just say we wiped out all the digital. There are still countries that hold pallets of hundred dollar bills as their reserves. Oh trillions, yeah. Trillions upon trillions of paper hundred dollar bills have been put into coffers everywhere. Not so, to mention all those bearer bonds and stuff they have floating around. Oh God. Yeah, so it's going to be exciting. I think, um, you know, we're going to need, like I said to you yesterday, we're going to need probably three big daily red candlesticks on the Dow to confirm this is the real deal here. Um you can see back in February how they stopped it. We got one big red one, Oops. two big red ones, and then they turned around and got a, a bounce spike with a blue candlestick on the daily. So we only got, I'm thinking we're going to need to see three days. That gives us Friday. Um, if we get another red candlestick, we want to watch today's close. How close, how far are we from the close right now? Um, let's see, it's 3 o'clock, so we got another hour, and I think it closes at 4.30, so in, um, at 30 minutes. 30 okay, minutes. so a very bear, a, a bear, the most bearish close you can ever have is, is just uh, that candlestick straight on the lows. So we got, we got two red candles, because you can see it's turned. 
Yeah. Right. So if we, if we close today on the low into new lows, like if we get below 24,880 and we're in a red candlestick and we're near the low, then we're going to get a big down day Friday. And if we close that one, then that's going to be a lineup for uh, Black Monday. Yeah, and, and my my gut feeling is you see those three touches, boom, boom. That's the one I took all the way back. This is that line, the main support. My for sure, you know, 100% win-win on my call of this being the crash is if once we penetrate, you know, once we penetrate the support line right here. Yeah. Once we go, once we go below this, and we could do that. Like I said, with the the rate of drop that we have now, once we go through that, that's it. The, then, the, all right. So I'm thinking, okay, another however many points it is. Let's see, 24. 200 maybe yeah we're gonna need okay. a good we're gonna need a good uh, finish on the lows today and another five six seven hundred point drop tomorrow yeah tomorrow and, and that and if we do that that will be a setup for an exact almost an exact scenario of, of uh, black Monday which was an air pocket Monday yeah that, that was when the quants and the algos opened like gap down I mean it was just gap down you know, well, in this percentage wise, on this one, we're talking gap down below 20,000 on the open. That's the kind of percentages we're talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, those two lines I showed you to, to, to go from this line to those two lines. Let me see if I can zoom out there again. Get your talk box out of the way. Um, which is, can I zoom out? It's barely, there we go. Let me see if I can't get, get them shown here a little bit closer. Right through there. There's the upper one, and that's not exactly accurate, but close enough. And it's not going to let me get back far enough. I can't zoom out, but it roughly... No, it was further down. It was down around at 12,000. Well, I'm looking at it on mine, and it's... I would use a precise technical term from what I'm saying. Fugly. <laughs> 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 that chart is fugly. It's been a long time. Fugly. It is fug <laughs> Oh, no, no, wait a second. Wait a second. This is in the wrong place. I have it. I wanted it right there. And just so people know, the reason why we're laughing is we haven't had any money in stocks for over 10 years. At least oh, I have Oh, God, you don't know how disappointed I was in the 80s. I went between a couple of companies, a couple of engineering firms, and, you know, a lot of firms back then, you had to be working there for a year before they'd even let you get in. You know, you know how the corporate world was. And oh, yeah. I felt so shorted because of the tech run up that I because of my jobs, the couple of jobs that I had and changing positions yeah. that I wasn't able to get in on that. I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad and then when and in and in and when 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 the Nasdaq broke and came back down off that five thousand high, I was like, Yeah, I can finally get in and run it back up. <laughs> Sucker, <laughs> and and I lost it, and 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 I, I I didn't get a chance because you know life got, and then I got into my divorce, and I was like the whole stock market thing went away, and I was like there goes my career, and I'm like, but you know what I'm oh, saying? I know it's crazy, and you know you think about that, uh, you know I know Bixweer talks about it a lot, you know the <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, uh, DTCC warehouse that was flooded yeah. by a Hurricane flooded. Sandy came and sat on top of it and somebody left the door open and and uh, that didn't do a good enough job so they had to start a fire yes yeah, so, yeah so they didn't the flood wasn't enough so they had to come in and start a fire on Water Street I mean you can't make this stuff up you can't make it up but anyway the point I was trying to make is that you know People think, well, you know, I own Microsoft, and I called my broker up and ordered the shares, the physical. I've got those stock certificates in an envelope in my safe. It doesn't matter. 
Those things have been rehypothecated and counterfeited 10,000 times. There's probably a hundred times the number that they say are out there are out there. Everybody's going to be musical chairs. There's going to be one chair and 10,000 people trying to sit in it at the same time. That's that's the thing is... No, I don't have it in my pocket. You know, I've, I've even heard, I've even heard um, that that some hedge funds just created just created um, their own stocks. Yeah, absolutely. You don't know when your broker, when you buy the stock from your broker, almost all the time it's held in street name, which means that the shares are held by the broker and not by you. And you find that out when you try to short, because there's a lot of short uh, stocks I tried to short and the broker called me back and said, oh, I can't short it. I'm like, why can't I short it? Because we don't have any shares of it. It has to be held in street name here in the brokerage. Someone else has to own it in our brokerage. I'm like, that. you people are a joke. But, yeah, when I want to short, they don't have anything. But you can guarantee it they're bucketing those trades for a lot of, a lot of those brokers. They're not taking the trades down to Wall Street. They're not buying anything. They're just telling you, yeah, you got the shares. And then when everything hits the fan, oh, they're just going to declare bankruptcy. And what, yep. what do you have? What, what insurance do you have? What is it? The FSLIC? Some, um, some crazy unfunded uh, organization? Uh, I, I don't even remember what it is that insures stocks or brokers, but it's... I mean, you remember... <laughs> Here's my policy. <laughs> This is subclause one dash one dash two ounces. Are those eagles? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and I got another policy. It was a little five ounce um, sunshine. Oh, look at that! This is my oh, big policy. That's a beauty. Yeah. Mm. I got Good stuff. I've got, yeah, I've got my policies. You know, I, I'm not a big birthday or holiday guy, but for the last 15 years or so, I told everybody in my family and any extended family and any friends, no one is allowed to buy me any gifts at all unless it's physical silver. So I always, Christmas, birthday, oh, here's some more eagles. That's that's the only thing I want is physical silver. <laughs> Uh, okay, Aaron. So we're gonna have to get back together. This is gonna be an exciting day. We might have to get back again tomorrow or Monday because this, if this yep. is it, um, I, you know, my my gut says that it's not just the the. My gut says it's not just the um, the fact that we're seeing the a couple of down big down candles. The down candles are. Um, are the icing on the cake, so to speak? So I'm looking at you know Trump's what Trump's saying, uh, the 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 meme change. I'm looking at what you know supposedly should be should be happening. We need to see these arrests. And I think I think that we're probably going to. I'm a little frustrated because I'm I'm like sick of it. Bring it on, bring on, bring it on, bring it on. I want to see some some people going down. Um, uh, you got. It's crazy, you know. A Q calls it the show, and that's the thing that concerns the hell out of me. Is Q keeps calling it? Well, enjoy the show. Enjoy the. Show. I don't want a show. Yeah. I want reality. I want the real thing. This is not a show for me. It's not entertainment. I don't want it. And so anyway, me back on my soapbox. Well, you know, if all this stuff is true that Q is alleging and Q is hinting at it, if you want to search for it yourself, you can go onto YouTube and look for pedophile, pedivore, all this stuff. But yeah. if this stuff is going on, the bottom line is, I, I hate to be this graphic, but the bottom line is that right now as we sit here and speak, another human being is being tortured and murdered by these people. Yep. And it's got to uh, stop. Uh, it's it's fewer because we know there have been already a lot of arrests. We already know that there are, um, you know, all the clergy that were in Pennsylvania that got taken down. Now, of course, the you know documented the accusations that came out against the Pope in in, in the Catholic Church in in um, city of Rome, and that hasn't gone very far yet. I mean, because they kind of patched that over. The mainstream media didn't even hardly talk about it. 
Uh, but we do know things are going on. We know there were a lot of arrests uh, last year, the year before. Or it was like right after Trump took office, there was like six or 700 arrests yeah. in L.A. Um, there are things that are going down. But, again, I, I roll back on my heels and I go, hey, I'm going to hold it back to the point, you know. Show me. Don't, don't tell me Trump didn't know exactly went down, what down, went down in New York on September 11th. He made comments before the event, and he made some really crazy comments afterwards. You know. Well, there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to give him a pass on. You know, I yeah, mean, there's, 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 there's I mean if many. I were president, I probably wouldn't live five minutes because I'd expose NASA for the lying frauds that they are. But, I mean, how much can he do? You know, how much can he actually come? I mean, you know the saying, you got to pick your battles? Yeah, my my hopes, again, you know, and I talked with Lynette about this when I was down, you know, with her. As my hopes is, and, and she she's really agreed with me. My hopes is when they, the government, everything, they try to manage the shift that true chaos, and that would be, from your perspective, the hand of God, is not something that they can shake and get walk away from. That the, that the chaos itself, the natural, or who is it calls it, economic mother nature, yeah. Just just moves forward and and people enough people wake up that we don't accept anything that goes or gets offered to us and and that um, that we truly do a full cleansing a full reset and that means wow that's going to be a lot of people broke and it's going to be a lot of people dead yeah oh. because because the and, and and I like I said I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it because and the the biggest reason I'm okay with it is not because of the evil perspective of getting rid of a lot of useless eaters. It's my my being okay with it comes from this. For this is end of 2018 and for literally seven years, basically since T and I got together. We have been doing everything we can to educate and share information with everyone that we can. I, I go into a convenience store and I say, here, you want some paper or do you want real money? And I do a little <laughs> educational steal with just about everybody that I come in contact with. And I have really, truly poured my heart out for so many people to say, hey, look, we're in a mess. We need to fix it. We need to clean it up. And you need to, you need to make the steps yourself because they're not going to fix it for you. So I have been yeah. educating. I know the frustration. Years, I've been doing it myself. Like hey, Aaron, we got to wrap and, this up because you're, you're completely yeah. breaking up. I don't know if it's on my end or your end, but I don't want this to end abruptly. So. No, 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 no. So the point is we're there. For all intents and purposes, we, you and I agree that we need some confirmation of just a couple of things to go look out below. Absolutely. So. All right. We'll take this up uh, in a couple of days. I'll see you then, Aaron. Yeah, let's, um, let's see what happens tomorrow, and then maybe we can, we can um, do it again this weekend, Sunday or something like that, to um, see what Monday might look like. Or maybe after markets open Sunday evening or something. Yeah, we'll check it out. Okay, I'll talk to you All then. Right. Thanks, Aaron. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.